Card visuals are great for showing your KPI values. However, you only have a limited amount of space. So why not make them flippable? Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do exactly that using only native functionalities. All right, let's start building a flip card. Now, first some context. Here I'm working on a report for a hospital and on one of the pages, I have a card with patient information. And there at the top, we can enter the patient ID. Then I see the key information for that patient. However, maybe I have more details or details that I kind of want to hide and only want to make visible on a click. Now, this card is flippable. You see, there's a small arrow. And when I click on it, it flips. And if I want to go back, I just click on the back arrow. All right, so how to set this up? Let's start from scratch. So first of all, we need a new card visual. So let's go here to the top and choose a new card visual. And let's place this new card over here and make it bigger. Now, the next thing that we want to do is add the main information to the card. Now, here, that's going to be the patient name in a sales report. That would be our total sales, for example. So let's click over here on add data. Let's look for a measure that returns the patient name. So patient name. And now it doesn't return a patient name because, well, I first have to select a patient. Now, how can I do that? Well, for that, we need to insert a slicer. So I'm going to insert a slicer at the top. So let's go here and use the new text slicer. It doesn't have to be the new text slicer. You can also go for any other one. However, because it's new, let's explore that one as well. There it is. I'm going to put it here at the top. And then on the text slicer, we have to add the field that we want to filter on. Now, in our case, that's going to be the patient ID. Now let's see if that works. So I'm going to put in the patient ID 11,000, click on enter, and there you go, Will Gardner. So that is working. And now I want to add extra information to the guard visual. So I'm going to go here to formatting. And then first of all, we go to call out values. Now I want the call out values to be in the center. I don't need the label. And then here in the layout, there we can say that we want the name at the top. All right. And then right below it, I want to have a picture. Okay. So I go to images and here I'm going to add that image to the series patient name. So let's turn it on. And then here we have two choices. Either we upload an image or image URL. Now I want to have a different image for each patient. So image URL. And then we can use a measure to return the URL to the image. So field value. Now let's search for the image measure, which are called image switch. There you go. And you see that doesn't nicely fit. So let's push it below it. So position we change to below text. And let's also make it a little bit smaller. So let's say a size of 150 pixels. And actually let's put it above the text. All right. And the text itself, I want it to be a little bit smaller. And let's also put the image to the center. Okay, so back to the call out value, values. And here we can set it instead of 45 to let's say 24. And let's also make the color a little bit more bluish so that it's more in line with the rest of the report. Perfect. Now, right below it, I want to add more details. For that, we have the reference labels. So reference labels, I want to add to the series patient name, then click on add data. And here we can look for all the measures that return, for example, the patient ID. So that's the first one. Then we probably also want to know the gender. Now for that, I also have a measure that uses the selected value function to return the gender. Then probably we want to know the blood group. And let's do one more. Let's also add the category. All right, so the information that I want here is there. Now it's just a matter of formatting. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. I want to change the layout. Now the layout is grayed out because I have one series selected. I need to switch first to all, then scroll down to layout. And then here I can, for example, change the positioning and the alignment, or I can go for a completely different style. Now the one that I want to have is tabular. You see now over here on the left, I have the title on the right, I have the value. However, now it's too far apart. So I want to push it a little bit more to the center. Now to do that, we can scroll down to cards. And then here we have padding and I'm going to switch to custom. Again, check the series that's selected, patient name. So that's good. And now here I want to increase the padding. For example, let's try 70 from the left, 70 from the right. All right, perfect. Now I do think that the extra information could be a little bit bigger. So I need to go then back to reference labels. 
then over here, select series all. Well, we'll apply to all of the series the moment that it's still one. Later on, it's going to be two. So I do it this at the all level. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Now let's maybe change the GUI to the GUI semi bold. And then for the title, we can also increase it to 10, where we then go for just the GUI. All right, so that extra attention goes to the values. Now I still want to increase the spacing a little bit that we have in between the reference labels. So I go to spacing and then here space between the labels. I'm going to put up to 20. And here the auto padding, I'm going to increase to 20 as well. All right, the main components for our card are there. Now it's not so pretty just yet. We're going to work on that a little bit later. The next thing that I want to do is make it flippable. So let's go back to our card as we're going to add a dummy measure to the data field. So this dummy measure is just a measure that returns well, nothing or one, doesn't really matter. Now here, my measure just returns the value one. That's it, all right? And now, of course, I don't wanna show it right next to it. I want to, well, show it on a click. So we go to formatting, then you can go to layout. Then here, I want to have single row cards, that's all good. And I want to have a maximum one showing. But then I get a scroll bar, which is still not what I want. So therefore, we go to overflow, where we can change it to paginated. And that's it. You see, now I have a little arrow that lets me flip to the next one. Well, the next one, of course, needs to look like the back of this card, which is just formatting. All right, let's go then to the back of our card and let's just change the look and feel and the information that shows here. Now, for the extra information, we can also make use of the reference labels. So I go to reference labels, make sure to select the right series, dummy, and then we add all that extra information that I want to show on the back of the card. So this could be the admission date, maybe the attending doctor and nurse, just like this. Maybe also the days at the hospital and uh, the discharge or tentative discharge date. Okay, so we have all of this extra information that I want to have on the back of our card. Now, the last thing that we need to do is just to make it prettier. Now, the first thing that I would change here is the lower part, which is for the reference labels. So let's maybe start with that one. I'm gonna go here to reference labels, then select all, scroll down and get rid of the background and also the divider line. Now I want to have a bit more space between the picture and where the column value is. So I'm gonna go to images, and then here we can determine how much space there should be. Now let's put it to 30 pixels. And then I think we could create some extra space there at the top and make the slicer part of our card. Now let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to go to padding for the cards. So cards, and then here we have padding. Now let's go for 90. All right, you see that creates some space. And then I just stretch it up just like this. And then later on, we can put the slicer on top of it. So we can make it a little bit smaller, work with the formatting later so that it really is aligned with the rest of our design. All right, now it starts to look cleaner, but it doesn't really feel special. Now, if you really want to go for a custom design, well, you could just create that design in a different tool like PowerPoint and then use that as a background. Now, let me show you what I have done. Here you see I switched to PowerPoint where I created the design for the front as well as the back of a card, just with simple shapes and icons. And then we can export that as an image that we then use in Power BI. Now, when you export it, just make sure that you group all of the shapes, right click, save as picture, and then here switch to SVG so that you have the best quality. All right, so once you have your designs for the front and the back, export it as images, go back to Power BI, and then select your card visual, go to formatting cards. And then here we have to change the background. And instead of going for just a simple color, we go for background image. Here you see I have my flip card front. Then I have to change the image fit to fit. Then here for the color, I put the transparency to 100%. I also need to make sure that there's no color for the entire background of the card, which we can do from size and style. And then here you see we have background still turned on. Let's turn it off. Now, I believe I still have a borderline there around the cards. So I go back to cards, 
and turn the board off. Now, by coincidence, the positioning of all of the extra details is already pretty good. Now, I could refine it a little bit more, but usually you would have to play around with the padding and the spacing and between the different elements to get it exactly right. All right, now, the same thing we need to do for the back, right? So here, under cards, I'm going to switch to dummy, and then background, background image. Now I want to choose the flip card back, that SVG. And of course, also make sure that you change the image fit to fit. All right, now let's flip to the back. Now that looks good. It's just that I still see that call out value there at the top, which is hmm, not great. So here, if we go to call out values, now one idea that you might have is that, well, you choose a dummy, turn the values off. Well, that would be good. However, then you will see for patient name, it's also turned off. So that doesn't really work. It turns everything off. Don't know if that should be like that, but okay. So let's switch back to dummy. What we can do instead is just make it transparent. All right, so we just make it hidden so that you don't see it. Now, maybe you also wanna push this information down, right? So that would be here under cards, padding, and then here we can switch to custom. And then for the dummy series, we're going to increase the padding to let's say 90 pixels from the top. And let's also here increase the padding from the left and from the right. Now, 70 like we had before is a bit too much. So I go maybe for 40, 40. And also here we need to increase the transparency to 100%, get rid of the border so that it looks a little bit cleaner. Okay, now I can flip back and forth. And now it's just a matter of refinement. You see, at the slicer is not nicely fitting in huh, with the rest of the design. So that's something I need to work on, but that's just formatting, right? The main key functionality is there. So let me show you the end result. There you go. You see, that looks a little bit better, but it's just formatting. And now I can flip to the back and back to the front. Perfect. Now let's also change the patient. So let's type in patient. 11,002. And you see, it perfectly pulls in all of the information for patient 11,002, John Leah. And what do you think? Is this something you would use? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, if you want to know all of my tips and tricks and build reports from beginning to end, like this one, then check out my upcoming design transformation program over here. Now, I want to thank you for watching. I see you in the next video.